Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about content. So let's get into it. So the question in question was Frederick. Well, it was actually posted on a video that I made a while back. That's where I would try to explain why I make the YouTube videos that I make and short, long story short. It's basically because I enjoy it and because when I was a junior software developer uh, there was nothing like the stuff that I make. Uh, at least I couldn't find it so hey I thought then I'll do it. And so the question was Frederick you've explained perfectly what many of us are looking for. Apart from yourself what other channels or online resources in general would you recommend with a similar approach as your own? Thank you again for your content. Well, uh, basically the disappointing answer, I wouldn't even have made a video if this was the whole story uh, that I gave back, was that I, I basically can't answer that question for you. And the reason is very simple, I do literally no research on any competitors I might have. I don't even consider other people who make videos that are, like, I don't, even if they were to literally sit in a bathtub with like walking around videos and like or copy pasted everything that I made I wouldn't consider consider them to be a competitor to me uh, it would simply be yet another person who does something that I think that we should all be doing if at all possible uh, and uh, so since I don't research that stuff to improve my own con uh, well yeah and on and at the same time I tried to I try to say this I'll try to say this in a nice way. The stuff that I make guys isn't for me because the stuff that I make I talk about uh, that's kind of the reason why I don't have to prepare anything. It is obvious to me to me and to the vast majority of senior developers that I know uh, most of the stuff that I say is obvious. I mean some people still think it's fun to just share ideas of course and so forth but for me explaining to someone who is like fresh in the in their career how to I don't know behave in the workplace for like at their first job or things like that it's like it's not something that I myself go and look for uh, so I it's so that's why I don't know of any other resources because I'm not looking for it. So the follow-up to that becomes Thank you for the reply. Even though I suspect that most of us are juniors, it would be great to know what educational resources uh, resources <laughs> resources I got it you consume on a regular basis for your professional and personal development. Now, this is the reason why I made this video uh, because uh, this is a trick. It's uh, this is the reason why I I think that there are answers to this but I think that there are too few answers to this question that is not like oh the top 10 languages to learn or the top things you have to know to nail every interview etc 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 so let me explain my thinking on this so what I wrote back to the subscriber was that for professional purposes I consume content relevant to tools that I use at work and that depends on the project that I work f uh, work on for the moment now think about that for just a split second what I'm literally saying here is that I make a difference between content that I consume for my own personal enjoyment and personal development and content that I consume for work purposes. Now, you have probably heard somewhere that, uh, you know, it's a, this whole thing about being a software developer and you, you love coding and etc etc and this is all great, it's all good, it's exactly what you should be doing, but you should also consider that there are things that are just fun to play around with and then there are things that are kinda important. Uh, today, today I was interviewing a, this was a junior software developer and the, uh, like the standard stuff is being said for the most part like the it's a completely standard uh, conversation to begin off with, uh, to, to start off with. She is fairly nervous uh, and you know, trying her best to be sociable and pleasant, and we are having a good time, like all things considered, because I mean, it is an interview and nobody's 
truly comfortable in an interview, I suspect. And uh, so we have a few prepared questions, and uh, that the re this is also something that I've told other people who've been asking me about, like interviewing questions and so forth. And oh, it's unfair that you talk about I don't know backhand stuff in the front end interview and so forth and so forth. And I kind of go, I don't care. I don't care, and neither does the interviewer, no, and neither does the person who's going to interview you. Nobody cares what you think. What's going to happen is that they're just going to say no, and then you might have enough courage or backbone to huff and puff a little bit about it, and that is exactly what happened. The uh, So we asked her a few basic questions. In this case it was for front-end development. So and we were strictly sticking to like the bare bone basics. Everything like just simple, simple thing about like just an open this is the this is my this is why I love this because and it is literally the same reason my manager who was there to like I was just there to help out. Why he he's he even says that to the candidate. The reason why we ask these questions is not because there's a like a right or wrong answer, which is of course bullshit. Because there, <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't ask it. Uh, it is an evaluation question that determines how experienced you are. And she could not answer a sim like the simplest question, such as, "What can you explain how you work with accessibility on the web?" Can you explain what a promise is in JavaScript? Like, just can you like sort of talk about the concept? What is the box model? And she like gets she gets very frustrated and like, oh no, I don't understand. Like, why are you asking? What do you mean about the box model? I'm like, I'm just trying to can you, like there are different parts. Like, you maybe you've used like the margin or the padding or no. And this is the thing, guys. This is why I try to consume content that is not just about learning the trendiest and the coolest and like whatever. It is about the craft itself. And that's going to be different. Some stuff is going to be completely generic, like the same thing for everybody. But some stuff is going to be very specific to your job. An example would be, I have, since I started at my current company, I re started subscribing to newsletters for Next.js, a framework I didn't even have, I didn't even care about it until I started working at this job, because I don't need it for my personal reasons, and I don't I didn't work with it, and I didn't really like. I understood its value, but it was not something that I was like super, super into. But now I am because it is relevant for my job, and that is like the the career part talking. And then there are things that I do for per personal reasons, things that I only learn about, not necessarily because I mean uh, that I need it for a job. And I mean, I even though it's for job um, for my work, I still enjoy w learning things that will further my career or do things of that nature but for personal reasons like say I'm watching things about cryptography now and learning about Rust and seeing if I can learn more advanced usages of TypeScript and machine learning and security and all kinds of stuff like I have a playlist that is a my like it has to how I don't know how much and then for work purposes it can be everything that is really things like security different standards like what can i use what can i not use uh, devops architecture even management although i will admit that whenever i sit down and try to learn about management from someone it feels like reading things that are well they they're designed for the mentally challenged because I cannot imagine that people go to school to learn how to do a pep talk. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I will never be a manager, I and mean, I just don't get it. Anywho, so what I want you to take away from this is basically that the thing I want you to to really think about when you like you ask me, okay, what do I study in order to further my own career? Well, I'll fire it right back at you and ask what do you think that you need in order to advance in the company that you find yourself? What services are you using? What tools are you using? What standards are you using? Like all of this stuff. And you should, for professional reasons, 
immediately get an inlet or find yourself like a, a flow of information related to that stack that you're using and like the concepts that you find yourself doing because otherwise and if you just do like this exactly the thing that you might be doing you're not like looking around you might find yourself in that exact situation as this person I was talking about where like you don't even like you, because you've never had to do anything related to any of the stuff that like most of us consider standard practice that are like working within the industry you have no knowledge of stuff that is cr kind of critical in order to to do things in a specific role as a junior if you really think about it that's actually what it means to be a junior developer as a junior developer you cannot afford to just focus on one thing because the industry doesn't care if you are just die hard into I don't know CSS because the thing that we are hiring requires for the, we require more from you and you may not love everything that you are forced to deal with as a software developer but you have to understand that this is a job some part if you're really lucky you're gonna love all of it if you're unlucky you're gonna have to learn some stuff that you don't want to learn but that's the job and then for personal reasons Learn whatever makes you f happy, because that's what I do. Have a great day.